Could I just meet the woman in charge? Your CEO? Oh, that would be me. Oh, your CFO. Me. Your COO. Here. President of the Barbie division. President. I'm a man with no power. Does that make me a woman? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the best moments in the Barbie movie that went right over kids' heads. She thinks I'm a fascist? I don't control the railways or the flow of commerce? Number 10. Film references. You, Greta Gerwig, have a watch list for us of 29 films that influenced the look and script of Barbie. Writer-director Greta Gerwig infused Barbie with an array of classic films ranging from sci-fi epics to soundstage musicals. The Wizard of Oz is relatively well known to all ages, but it's less likely that Gen Zers caught the prologue's homage to Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Gerwig was also influenced by French cinema, specifically Jacques Demy's colorful The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, even styling Barbie's bedtime hair after Catherine Deneuve's character. Speaking of color, there's also the Oracle-esque Weird Barbie's Pink Heel vs. Brown Birkenstock, making reference to Neo's Blue Pill vs. Red Pill from The Matrix. Those are just a few of the cinephile references, which also include Saturday Night Fever, The Truman Show, and The Shining, another Kubrick classic. Hello? Are you two, like, shining? No, no, it's nothing like that. Are you shining with a real Barbie? No! Uh, I mean, maybe? Like, a little? Yes? <sighs> Number 9. 80s and 90s Nostalgia Take your celebrate disco bell bottoms oh! and your ice capade pretty practice suit and dabbling show skirt! Since Greta Gerwig was born in 1983, it makes sense that Barbie features cultural references from the 1980s and 90s. The story doesn't take place during that time, but even the smallest detail sparks some childhood nostalgia. I had that tree house. I saved up my allowance to buy it. The Barbie Land set alone takes us back to the days of playing pretend with our play sets and dream houses filled with tiny accessories and decals. All of the elements are plastic, and the dolls mime actions like showering and eating. Kids can relate to playing with toys, but through Gerwig's millennial lens, we're treated to specific sights and sounds, like experimenting with your Barbie's look and blasting the Spice Girls. We're essentially like Gloria, excitedly pointing out every familiar doll inhabiting the pink utopia. Oh my god, I had a weird Barbie! Yeah, you did. You make them weird by playing too hard. It's cool. Number 8. Discontinued Dolls Barbie features some controversial dolls for Mattel's history, like Barbie's bestie Midge, specifically 2002's pregnant version, which didn't go over very well with parents. Growing up, Skipper had a short run in the 1970s that ended for obvious reasons. May I? Okay. Watch this. Ah! Her boobs grow. Why would they do that? Alan was marketed as Ken's buddy, but if Ken wasn't that popular on his own to begin with. His friend certainly wasn't either. More discarded dolls inhabit Weird Barbie's house, including Video Girl Barbie, another bizarre design that was eventually discontinued. I have a TV in my back. You know whose dream that is? Nobody. Nobody's dream. In the 1990s, Earring Magic Ken gained a reputation as the Gay Ken for his jewelry placement and outfit. And yes, Sugar Daddy Ken was indeed a real doll with an odd gimmick of being the owner or daddy of a dog named Sugar. And I have an earring, a magic earring. These were actual Kens. Number 7. Clever Casting We don't think young audiences were in awe of the Barbie cast like some of the adults who recognize the cameos and connections. I know I'm stereotypical Barbie and therefore don't form conjectures concerning the causality of adjacent unfolding events, but some things have been happening that might be related." Chris Taylor from Season 5 of Margot Robbie's favorite show Love Island scored a brief but very cool part presenting the Nobel Prize in Horses to Ken. Robbie and British actress Emma Mackey have each been mistaken for the other because they look so similar. But oddly enough, not so much in this film. Once we like got all dressed up as our Barbies, we were kind of like, we don't actually look that similar. Yeah. Like when she's got her brown hair and I've got my blonde hair, mm -hmm. we don't look that similar. Mackie also shared the screen with her sex education co-stars Shuti Gatwa and Connor Swindells, although you won't find their show on any Netflix kid profiles. While those actors are probably unrecognizable to kiddos, Will Ferrell, aka Buddy the Elf, and Lord Business might be a little more familiar. Shame on you, executive number two! You think I spent my entire life in boardrooms because of a bottom line? No, I got into this business because of little girls and their dreams. 
in the least creepy way possible. Number six, Ken being just a dude. Toxic masculinity probably isn't something children think or know about, so they likely saw Ken's problematic change in personality as some weird character quirk. Don't question it, just roll with it, tiny baby. The sight of men riding horses and the Ken's new brewski beer way of life probably didn't have quite the same comedic effect as it did for adults. Incidentally, Ken's new wardrobe, mainly his Fojo Mojo Mink sand shirt with an abundance of accessories, was inspired by 80s era Sylvester Stallone. When the Barbies enact their takeover, their plan includes playing into the Ken's bro mentality giving them opportunities to mansplain things like the Godfather. This movie is a rich blend of Coppola's aesthetic genius and a triumph to Robert Evans and the architecture of the 70s studio system. Can you start the movie over and just talk through the whole thing? The Kens also serenade their Barbies with Matchbox 20's 1997 song Push, which has a history of being labeled as misogynistic. How many kids picked up on all that? What are you doing? We gotta go. We have to go back. Number 5. Barbie's Existential Crisis Do you guys ever think about dying? Barbie's awkward moment mid-disco gets laughs from everyone because of the record scratch effect, but this is the first sign of her oncoming existential dread. And we doubt the vast majority of children even understand what existential means. That's gonna spread what? everywhere, and then you're gonna start getting sad and mushy and complicated. No! To them, Barbie's perfect world just becomes less perfect when her morning routine is filled with inconveniences. But the deeper issues she's facing are about her identity, her purpose in life, and what true happiness means for her. It's safe to say these philosophical questions and ideas are pretty out of reach for the younger audience members. Good night, Barbies! I'm definitely not thinking about death anymore. Number 4. Depression Barbie Okay, kids. Gloria's anxiety, loneliness, and insecurities are the catalyst to stereotypical Barbie's descent into irrepressible thoughts of death Barbie, complete with flat feet, cellulite, and morning breath. I got sad and weird, and then the drawings got sad and weird, and maybe because I couldn't be like you, I ended up making you like me? These days, mental health is a much more prevalent topic, and kids know they're encouraged to express their feelings. Although they likely laughed through the commercial for Depression Barbie, we don't expect them to fully grasp the throes of the mental disorder. However, it's a scene that was a little too relatable for those who felt seen, especially the specificities of all-day sweatpants attire and rewatching Pride and Prejudice. To paraphrase Laganja Estranja, we feel very attacked. Anxiety, panic attacks, and OCD sold separately. Number 3. Religious Themes and Allegories I always knew that Barbie would surprise me, but I never expected this. In interviews, Greta Gerwig credited her Catholic background as another influence on Barbie. Even if they're aware of biblical stories, kids won't see the reverse storyline of Adam and Eve play out in the film. Ken was literally created as an extension or accessory to Barbie, and Gerwig cleverly connected that to the creation myth that Eve was molded from Adam. I only exist. Within the warmth of your gaze, without it, I'm just another blonde guy who can't do flips. Also, when she's in the real world, Barbie unknowingly meets her maker, Ruth Handler, and shares a blink and you'll miss it moment that resembles Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam. Even many adults missed out on that one. What? It's because I don't know how to drink tea. No, you look different. Number 2. Feminism and the Patriarchy The concepts of feminism and the patriarchy aren't exactly taught in schools, and with the amount of times that latter term is used throughout Barbie, kids are bound to have questions. Oh, come off it. Everybody hates women. Women hate women and men hate women. It's the one thing we can all agree on. Is that true? It's complicated. Hate is a strong word. Wake up, Mom! Under Ken's newly implemented patriarchal ideology in Barbie Land, the Barbies become literal maids or, quote, helpful decorations. But after the Barbies restore their power, they don't go back to an entirely matriarchal way of living because this is Ken's journey, too. Maybe all the things that you thought made you you aren't really you. After she learns more about self-empowerment, Barbie encourages Ken to find himself instead of using his relationship status, possessions, or the patriarchy to define who he is. The movie's universal message of self-acceptance and equality is feminism, 
And even if the little ones didn't get it, this is a good starting point for those conversations. By giving voice to the cognitive dissonance required to be a woman under the patriarchy, you robbed it of its power. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bratz Dolls Fans theorize the junior high girls are a nod to the Barbie competitors' OG lineup. Yasmin, Chloe, Jade, and Sasha. Aren't you guys gonna thank me and give me a big hug? <laughs> for being your favorite toy. We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. Barbie's first gynecologist appointment. This moment of the former doll proudly talking about her new human anatomy is everything. Name? Oh, I'm um, Handler, comma, Barbara. And what are you here for today, Barbara? I'm here to see my gynecologist. Inclusive casting. Kids today might not understand how exciting it is to see Barbies of all shapes, sizes, and skin tones on the big screen. Hi, Barbie. 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 Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Si se puede. An unexpected reference to iconic 2002 DCOM Gotta Kick It Up, starring America Ferreira. Si se puede. That's a political statement. That's appropriation, Dad. Ruth Handler. Rhea Perlman plays the woman behind Barbie and jokes about the Mattel co-founder's financial controversies. Baby, I am Mattel until the IRS got to me, but that's another movie. So you're Ruth Handler, inventor of Barbie. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Adult Humor Barbie may be a children's toy, but as we've discussed, the Barbie movie has a more adult narrative and it's rated PG-13 for a reason. There's nothing overtly sexual, but quite a few innuendos and entends make their way in, like the Kens threatening to beach each other off. Anyone who wants to beach him off has to beach me off first. I will beach both of you off at the same time. But you don't even know how to beach yourself off. How are you going to beach oh, both of you off? That doesn't make sense. Ken? Can you beat beat yourself off? Ken does make an awkward attempt at a girlfriend-boyfriend sleepover, but even he doesn't know what that means. Also, when Barbie goes to the real world, she's immediately met with catcalling. I don't know exactly what you meant with all of those little quips, but I'm picking up on some sort of entendre, which appears to be double. And I would just like to inform you, I do not have a vagina. However, not all the humor is suggestive. Greta Gerwig threw in some subversive jokes about Barbie having a Proustian memory, and a Proust Barbie appears in the background. This is a nod to, if you didn't know, author Marcel Proust. Remember Proust Barbie? That did not sell very well. <laughs> what adult-oriented joke made you laugh the most? Let us know in the comments. Well, I will, well, I will, I wanna push you down. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.